going on? I'm Eric Moore, and in this episode, I take you to the Florida swamp during the wet season and hunt for one of America's remaining dinosaurs. Well, that's it. We're out of here. It's gonna be awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm speechless. Let's get out there. I'm Eric, and that is a large male American crocodile. On this episode, we're gonna dive into the heart of their wilderness and figure out how we can create a new dawn for these American dinos. In this episode, we crock it, USA. So my name is Eric Moore, and I am on the most radical mission of all time, the mission to end extinction. This is not gonna be easy, but it is gonna be done. For we have to, we have to save life on our planet before it's gone, before it's too late. And how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to do this by finding the wild hero in all of us. Together, we are going to usher in a new nature, a new humanity, a coexistence like the world has never seen before. Right now, humanity has a choice to make, whether to continue killing the planet or start saving the planet. I think you know the answer, so do I. The only thing left to do is get wild. Hello again. It's time we talk about the mission of the Wild Hero. You see, the thing is, this is no ordinary mission, for it is a mission to save life in our solar system. And it starts here. And it starts right now. Our species has a choice to make, to be the salvation or the damnation of our planet. A planet unique with life. Nature, as we call it in English, uh, granted there's life in, you know, the most inhospitable places on the planet, places, you know, that will never see the light of the sun, but that is still life and that is still worth protecting because the thing is about nature, or just the natural circumstances around us, it's a giant web. And everything is a brick that builds up a huge, huge, glorious monument to be seen around the galaxy. A monument of light, a monument of life, a monument that needs protecting. Now, one of the awesome things about being a Florida citizen is uh, the animals in our backyard, particularly the bird life. Florida is filled with birds of all shapes and sizes, particularly the giant sandhill crane, one of a couple really tall bird species here in the state of Florida. They're found uh, from one coast to the other, north to south. Um, some are migratory, some stay here all year round. And uh, you know they like to play that good old game of chicken on the highways. And as we dive into our adventure, we're going to look for ways to coexist with animals such as the sandhill crane, but even the apex predators as well. That's where our mission comes in. The mission to end extinction. And it's, it's going to be hard work, but it's going to be simple. And I'm going to show you how. But this is not going to be where I'm going to do it. Uh, Jameson and I, I think, are going to head out on a picnic this afternoon into the lair of one of Florida's super predators, the king of the swamp, a guy, a creature that's been around for millions of years. Check it out. Let's go. We are going down the Little Big Econ Lockatchee River. A name crazy to say, but also crazy for the amount of wildlife to be found here. Already we've seen a load of bird species, like we've seen eagles, hawks, wading birds, the big white birds, those are gray egrets, but we've also seen herons, grackles, and ahingas. But hiding in amongst all of this, is the ruler of the river, maybe the ruler of Florida, my favorite resident, the American alligator. But Florida is so lucky to be home to not one, but two native crocodilian species. 
The other one is found a little south of here, and it's how I kicked off my summer. Check it out. I was in a boat, and I was looking for a dragon. There's a little pond that opens up to the main saltwater inner waterway. Wilderness Waterway, as it's called. It goes from Flamingo, the tip of the Everglades, all the way up to Everglades City on the west coast. This again shows how intricate this vast ecosystem is. and How, how did I get into crocodiles? Well, first it started with the love of dinosaurs as a tiny little kid. And that just grew into a lifelong obsession through elementary schools. I'd always be giving reptile presentations. Even though I lived in Western Canada, where reptiles are very few and very far between. Plus, every day I would get home from school at 3.45 and at 4 o'clock, my favorite childhood show would come on about some crazy Australian wrangling snakes and crocs and that led to an inspiration and so of course when it comes full circle my first episode it's got to be about crocs a lot of people see a bunch of crocs and they just see a bunch of lifeless bricks with no character and no emotion and they couldn't be farther from the truth. Every soul on this planet has its own personality and its own charm. And every soul on this planet deserves a fighting chance. Plus, American crocodiles are not considered one of the man-eating species. Unlike the Nile crocodile over in Africa, which is the world's most deadly species, killing about 300 people per year. Being able to enter the salt water extends their territory tenfold but what it takes is a special secretion gland on their tongue that helps remove salt from their system after long periods at sea the saltwater crocodile has that as well as a few other species prehistoric adaptation that allows them to survive anything really except man and that's where we come and we have to be their adaptation we have to be the reason they survive no crocodile found, but I'm pretty sure that crocodile had his eye on me at some point or another. The Everglades. The Everglades National Park is without a doubt one of my favorite places on the planet and for so many reasons. For starters, it's chock-a-block full of wildlife. You've got reptiles of all sorts, snakes, lizards, crocs, gators. It's got um, birds of all sorts. I've seen raptors, I've seen eagles, hawks, owls, um, I've seen songbirds of all colors, I've seen signs of shark activity, it abounds the mangroves. You just know this place is filled with wildlife, including these bloody mosquitoes, but hey, you gotta deal with it. And there's other reasons to love this place. Adventure is around every corner. All of it is just waiting to be discovered and I cannot wait to do it. The United States of America is so lucky to be home to two native species of crocodilian. The American Crocodile and the American Alligator. We all know of the American Alligator and they know of the Alligator way out in Texas. It has a range that covers many states in the southeastern part of the country. But the American Crocodile is not so known about. But he's been around just as long as the Gator, if not a little bit longer. And he's definitely been here a lot longer than us. He is an animal right out of the age of the dinosaurs. But what brings me back the most is the inspiration when you see uh, biologists working with the National Park out in the bush uh, recording data to do what they can to preserve this beautiful natural area. And it breaks my heart to see right beside their hard work 
a plastic bottle. That's something we can fix. That's something we can immediately start right now. And that's something we can immediately start helping the people out here sweating their butts off day in and day off, slapping mosquitoes day in and day out just to do what they can so that wild places like this stay wild for a very, very long time. Peheoki, an indigenous term meaning the river of grass. And that is what's behind us here, the Everglades. This water originated up at Lake Okeechobee and central Florida and has now slowly through time made its way all the way south to here, the Everglades. And why? It's because of the bedrock that Florida is made of. This is a giant limestone slab. It's almost like it's almost like a frying pan. And so basically, the southern part of Florida is this edge of the frying pan. So this is northern Florida, this is southern Florida. And so what happens as the rain starts to pour in north Florida, all that water slowly drifts south down here. And this is the Everglades down here. And right up here is an agriculture area around a big lake called Lake Okeechobee. So again, it's raining, it's raining, and the water's running all the way south to the Everglades, or at least it used to. But now, humanity has come in, and the thirst of humanity has... taken away much of that need of water that this ecosystem needs to survive. The river of grass is continuing to get some more water over there, and this truly is the alligator's kingdom. Crocodiles, yes, they're here, but they're only in the southern bit. The alligators, they could be anywhere out there, including right here in front of us. They can use this slightly flooded grassy area to move for through miles or remain hidden. This is the wet season. This is their season. Now this gator right here, she looks to be a little female. Friends, we need to have a serious talk. This is a national park. If there's one place this snake should be safe, it's here. The speed limit is 45 or 55, but even that's too fast. This, this is tragic. Look what beautiful specimen, healthy snake. Looked like he was about to go through a shed. A fresh new suit of scales, but no, he's a goner now. He's gonna be lunch for a vulture or something else. As the sun goes down, we're gonna see more of these scaly friends, but I'm sorry, buddy. Your life treat you better than the next go round. It sucks. Slow down. grass they see behind me is what's called saw grass. What's beneath it is important. That's the limestone. You can actually see it exposed here. And as this rain starts to fall down, it's not going to be absorbed by the ground. It's going to sit on top and it's going to help fill up this giant basin of water, which is at most maybe like a foot deep on average. It does have pools, ponds, but at the most it's a very shallow water, but it's everywhere and it's slowly and i mean slow like glacial speeds moving south and it's eventually going to meet that mangrove habitat and the two waters are going to come together and that's where the crocs hang out and that's where the gators and the crocs can be found in the same pond it's something super cool and something super unique to the everglades very few countries get to have two crocodilians and we are in one of the spots in the United States of America where you can find the alligator 
and the crocodile living their best life naturally. And what do you know? More trash. Pick up after yourselves, people. This is preventable. I get it. Actually, I don't. Why can't you throw this out? Why does this need to be thrown out here and not... Wait one second, there's another. Found it, someone's nasty pandemic mask. Why can't you throw this out? Don't throw it in Mother Nature's yard. Don't throw it in my natural friend's backyard. Don't be lazy. Throw it in the trash. So far, I've seen two things we can fix. How fast we drive on these roads and how often we just chuck our stuff into this. Our first American crocodile. He's hanging out here, right in the marina. Right where the most human traffic goes on is where this large croc calls home. And just a moment ago, his female was hanging around here. And I reckon that female has got a nest somewhere nearby. And it's nesting season for these guys, so the little hatchlings are gonna start coming out sooner or later and that's when mom she gets really protective so i need to be careful near here the water's edge because man she loves her babies not for a long time but for a short time she's the best mother on the planet that right there that's that's daddy -o. he's helping out but once those hatchlings come he's gone and it's up to the mom to take care now notice how much more pointed his snout is than an alligator's. Notice how the skull structure is much more sharp and rigid than that of a wider snout gator. And this water here is a very brackish water, very salty. Gators, they don't like the salt water so much. They like the fresher stuff. But the crocs, the American crocs, they're at home in this stuff. And it's in this water you can also find endangered sawfish, sharks, manatees, but no one tops the king. That croc, this is his domain. He's the boss. And we're just living in it. These crocodiles are actually a success story. Almost extinct, they've made a tremendous recovery thanks to the efforts of some unseen heroes. And that's our mission to figure out how we can strengthen out those efforts to keep these crocodiles along for a couple more million years. While I was looking at the crocodiles, I overheard a very sad question. Someone said, where are the flamingos? And it's heartbreaking because the flamingos, even though they were here hundreds of years ago and up until the early 19th, 20th century, uh, were hunted to extinction by man. Um, humans' greed for finer fashion and finer feathers led to their demise and led them to being hunted to the point where they're no longer found here at Flamingo Campground. All you can find of it today is the name and the uh, birds on the coffee mugs. And I really hope that does not have the same um, story for our American crocodile but I have the best hope and the best faith in the heroes fighting for their protection right now. And I'll tell you one thing that's not going extinct anytime soon, the bugs. But let's keep exploring. This has been an awesome trip so far, and I think tomorrow, tomorrow will be a new dawn for these dinos of the USA. Wow, what a night, what a day. But right as it's coming to a close and we're pulling into shelter here, um, a giant thunderstorm is about to let loose. And I have about 200 meters of open prairie between me and my shelter. I mean, this is Florida and that's a lightning storm. And well, here goes nothing. I don't know why they gave me the farthest one. I'm the only one here, and they gave me the farthest tent from the parking lot. 
Thanks, Everglades. Right behind me is the Florida Bay. No rain yet. But you just know it's raining on all those alligators and all those crocodiles. Joyce, the wet season is here. Moon is a little spooky tonight. Seriously, those Everglades were amazing. Just as great as this Econ Locachi River. And tell you what, it might say fall on the calendar, but it sure still feels like summer. And speaking of that, on another paddle trip down in the Everglades in the heat of the wet season, um, I went on the hunt for another elusive male crocodile. But in reality, I had no idea what I was really about to experience. So as we know, the Everglades is ripe with all sorts of different terrains, different geographies, different habitats. And this pond right here is actually a convergence where the fresh water truly starts meeting the salt water. This is a very sort of brackish zone, so it could be home to a load of wildlife, definitely gators, very likely chance. Um, this is where they're going to start to thin out. We're going to jump in the boat and see what's swimming around. Fingers crossed for a crocodile. Um, this seems like it's a very natural spot to find one. When it's adventure time, it's adventure time. Put on your adventure shirt. This is actually one of my favorite shirts. It comes from a place that means a lot to me, inspired by someone who means even more. And so I uh, carry that good luck with me. I put on my old adventure hat, old adventure shades with some new cracks from this adventure. And uh, hopefully it gets us through. Hopefully it gets us across. It's hot, it's buggy. I wouldn't rather be anywhere else. Just like that, we're off. Nine mile pond. It's said home to a large male croc. Let's see if we can see him with the zoom and the binoculars, of course. Start paying attention to frogs. It doesn't help that the person who told me of this croc said that its name is Croczilla. So it appears the uh, metal bird of terror has flown off. That was wicked. Just so cool. Peace has returned to the valley. So now we're out. 
for a seven mile paddle. Hold on to your butts. Starting to get a little narrow through here. One way traffic. I feel like I'm trying to drive a Cadillac through London. All these, so they call some of these trails paddling trails. And I'm wondering who's traveling through them, like Frodo Baggins. They're so small. You know they're originally built by Crocs for sure, and now we're just using it to see their domain, see their kingdom. I'm gonna turn around here, try and find a white post. I haven't seen one in a while. But one thing about this place, and I can definitely attest to it, is it's a freaking maze. And you can just see how a croc or something can get in here and just have the best territory you could ever ask for. more rain. Right now I am essentially pulling myself through sand and silt. I'm not boating, I'm sliding and we hit the mangroves. Nope. Every time you stir up the bottom, you get that nice smell of decomposition. Oh it smells like Jameson sometimes. I think I put sunscreen on. It's gonna open up here. Gorgeous. What's that? I see something. So as I'm sliding through this low tide water, dragging my rear against the bottom, you can see how this water depth would be perfect for a crocodilian. They could just scoot their way through here using those powerful tails. Those tails are 90% muscle. They've got so much power up in there. And they can just push right here, hunt all these little fish, trying to find a hiding spot. As their domain shrinks and shrinks as the water goes out. For me, I have to give a little extra for a croc. He'd be so happy. And if he's happy, I'm happy. So, it's 12 o'clock. Changed my hat. Black cap was a little hot on the head, so I put on my bandana. Keep the sun off of it. Just past marker number 50. So I think that means we're halfway. Time for a little trail mix. I gotta say, great value at Walmart. They have a great caramel trail mix. Or mountain mooks. It's a good little lunch. The mangroves themselves act as a huge purifier. And they help recycle a lot of nutrients. And then in amongst the mangrove roots, you can see all the little fishes, all the little cichlids, all the little saltwater fish, even a couple freshwater fishes swimming around. It's such a bustling community. And the bottom is made up of this like, ugh, silty sandy material full of shells. So this is where a lot of organic recycling goes on. Gives it that beautiful smell. That Jameson Poopery sort of smell. Nothing better than a little exploration, at least in my opinion. My grandmother was from Norway and moved to the US, moved to Florida. When she was young, met my granddad, but she had some Viking blood in her. I think that Viking blood must live on in me because there's something so interesting about what's around the corner. You just want to keep going. The thing about this grass though, is it doesn't give you too much time to drift. You basically have to muscle every stroke.
came to a bunch of reeds that were not passable. I had to turn the canoe around. So I figured the 60 I knew was better than the countless other posts I didn't. Suck it up and paddle. There's so many other things that could be going on in this world. There's 50, where's 49? So finally, we're coming out of the trail and the truck's in front of me. And what do you know? There's a gator here waiting for us. Here we go, one adventure, mini adventure. No crocs, but plenty of other wildlife. And a heck of an adventure. Do or die. Just like that. We're back. I'll tell you what, those Everglades and this little big econ are truly some epic places. And it's so sad to think that they are being attacked by an invisible force, a force that is everywhere, a force that is taking wild lives every day, never to be seen again. The force of extinction. And it is my mission and the mission of I hope the wild hero in you to end extinction. But how do we fight against something that we can't see, but is everywhere? Well, we make it real. We make it something we can see. And how do we do that? Well, a strategy I think would be super successful is, is written by a Pulitzer Prize winner author, um, E.O. Wilson. The Future of Life breaks down extinction into five manageable factors. H-I-P-P-O. Habitat invasive species, poaching, pollution, and over-harvesting. And to see what I mean, check out how I broke it down at the Crocodile Lake National Wildlife Refuge, an area at the tip of southern Florida and an area truly important and a critical area for our American crocodile. All right, gang, we made it to the Crocodile Lake National Wildlife Refuge. But as a heartbreaker, it is close to the general public. And why? Because this environment behind us is actually a very, very sensitive environment. It is home to some critically endangered animals and critically endangered habitats. So to preserve its pristineness, it has had its walls closed. So what makes an ecosystem sensitive? And what makes it at the point where it becomes so vulnerable? Well, we can blame all of the issues on a hippo. What do I mean by hippo? Well, I don't mean the type you wish you get every Christmas. I'm talking about the five factors of extinction and species loss, with the H being about habitat. And that's the most important, but that is also the most uh, talked about in today's society, for that has climate change. But what is also included in the habitat section? Well, we also have water reduction, as we were talking about up in Lake Okeechobee. Um, it has human communities coming in and homes. But because of climate change, everyone likes to say that today's extinction is not man-caused. Uh, but if you realize, H, humans, the environment is only in this one here. There are four other factors that humans influence, the other one being invasive, the P being pollution, the other P being poaching, which breaks my heart still exists, and the O, over harvesting. And as we go around our adventures today, we're going to break down these other four. We're all familiar with the habitat. That has been on the front page of the news for the past couple of years, 
And that has, because of climate change, the biggest debate. But it's undeniable that these other factors are a reason why environments such as this are so important because the rest of the world is dealing with all of this. But here at the Crocodile Lake National Wildlife Refuge, they've shut the doors to human society and allowed the wild to take over again. So now, as they clean the slate, the crocodiles have a chance to come back. And this is one of their strongholds remaining, as well as up at Turkey Point, and of course the Everglades. The butterfly gardens here at the Croc Lake National Wildlife Refuge is something to uh, behold. And that's what this whole place is designed for, and it's why it's so awesome that they've taken the initiative to kind of step back from the general public's light and focus on the animals and focus on the habitat surrounding this place. You saw how much pollution is already gripping our natural parks. Um, so pollution, I've got a solution. Pollution solutions. I picked these things up. And now, wherever I go, I carry this bag rolled up in my backpack and unroll it if I need to. These, I whip out. And that way, if I see something along my travels, along my adventures that doesn't belong there, I can pick it up without having to touch it and put it right in the bag. And that way, this place is that little bit cleaner than it was when I showed up. And if we can all make that little difference, then we can really help out the heroes here at the Croc Lake National Wildlife Refuge, the heroes at the Everglades National Park, and all the other heroes fighting so hard for so many of these species. They're almost there. They just need a little bit more help. And they need your help. They need my help. And I think we can do it. Wow, what a cool little stop at the Croc Lake National Wildlife Refuge. And just on my way out, I had the pleasure of speaking with someone who works there, and they were speaking about the canal restoration project they're doing, where they're actually creating nesting sites for crocodiles so that the females have a better chance of finding a nest site and, you know, having some offspring, having some baby crocs. And they're also speaking about how they're training dogs to sniff out invasive pythons. So much humidity in the atmosphere right now. The water cycle is constantly on overdrive. It's constantly raining, it's constantly evaporating, it's constantly circulating all that moisture through the different levels of the ecosystem. Well, looks like our uh, exploration for Croxilla is gonna have to be put on hold for another afternoon of some huge thunderstorms it's coming down now but i don't care it's friday i have some friends coming to meet me here at everglades national park to rejoice in the wet scene and tonight we're going to go look at some animals that call this park home that deserve so much attention the snakes the snakes of the everglades are some of the most iconic species of the continent One of many little guys we hope to find tonight. Look at that beautiful belly. Beautiful coloring. Each one is its own painted sunset, really. Alright. The little big econ and Everglades are both home to apex predators here in the state of Florida. And what does it mean to be an apex predator? It means to be at the very top of the food chain. It means nothing really else is coming for you. For alligators and crocodiles, they're definitely at the top. But seriously, all animals are important. 
But the reason I chose the apex is they are the uh, indicator species. If they drop off, that shows sign of serious detriment throughout all the different levels of the food chain. Everything's affected. Everything is a one big cycle. So we really need to make sure we don't just do little bits here and there. We do little bits everywhere. And it only needs to be tiny, small steps. I'm not saying we need to drastically, completely change our lives. I'm just saying we need to take those five or few moments every day when we have a choice in front of us. To... We're in a new era. We need to start protecting these lands. Like I said, humanity can either be the damnation or the salvation of this planet. And I believe there is hope that we can really save the natural environment. And we really, really need to because as far as we know, there's no life on any other planet. I'm sure there might be somewhere, but we haven't found it yet, which could raise interest or the thought that we might be all that's left. And if life on this planet is all the life that's left in the universe, and our species is the cause of the extinguish of life, that's terrible. Of course, life will uh, always find a way, but life as we know it, won't unless we start taking the time to make the world a better place for us and the nature around us. So we are on the Econ Wakachi River, a much different water source than the mangroves I was paddling in. Uh, the Econ Wakachi River is a freshwater river, unlike the brackish mangroves, and it is loaded with tannins. And what gives it that dark coffee coloring and light cannot penetrate very deep into here, so that gives even more advantages to the prehistoric animals that live in there, such as the turtles, the gar, and the alligator. But something else about those tannins is it makes the water almost sweeter. Um, you might have heard, if you're a Florida native or you've been around here, the term sweet water, and that is the tannins in the water. And I'm actually going to do an experiment. I'm going to drink straight from this river and see how it tastes. This is gonna put me in a very vulnerable position because head down at the water's edge, that's when an alligator and that's what a crocodile sees as a dinner. So I'm gonna have to keep my wits about me, but I've got faith that gators, they're not so interested in the larger prey like crocodiles are. Uh, alligators having the strongest bite force in the animal kingdom tends to go for another reptile, turtles. Having all that crushing power is like a can opener for a turtle shell unfortunately and so he they're probably out there hunting right now and plus it's a little hot so i don't know if anyone's going to be near the water's edge but let's get this straw out and see what's up it's supposed to filter out all uh, natural bacteria, but unfortunately the heavy metals of humanity uh, doesn't always get out and i am right by like i said orlando so who knows what's in there what do you think, Jameson? And like I said, there could be a gator anywhere around here. They're definitely all up and down this river, and they are big. And there are bubbles all around us, so let's get this over with. So, sweet water test. One. Tastes like sweet tea. That's tremendous. Oh my gosh. Why am I ever gonna go get bottled water again? All you need is one of this in a river. There are bubbles right there. One last sip. And then you blow it out. Go the excess water out. It's tasty. Back to the Everglades. On my very last day, I was running out of time and I took one last trip to go look for that mighty large male crocodile that had been eluding me. Croczilla. Check it out. Everglades National Park, aka one of the baddest swamps in the United States of America. This place will take from you more than most places will ever take out of you. And you gotta give and give. A lot of people will give up. But if adventure's in your heart and your chin is up, this could be one of the most wild and exciting places to come explore. So much can be found here. From the crocodilians and the modern day dinosaurs to the countless bird species. From the pink birds to the red birds. And 
hopefully, if we can inspire enough people to come do this and come see this and do it in a healthy manner, I think that places like Everglades National Park can be the stepping stones to a cleaner and healthier future. You know, we're in a new century, we're in a new generation. The times of the past is the time of the past. Put the past in the past. I say, instead of building cities, we build a new nature. Humans are designed to build. We are the best builders. And unfortunately, as we've been building, we've been destroying the natural environment. So why not build the natural environment? There are plenty of examples that have shown that it can be done. So why not do it more and more? I say we flip industry on its head. Instead of building for a society, we build for nature. And that way, all life, not just the homo sapien human life, can prosper. And I think that way, if you believe in karma, planet Earth will continue to be the jewel of the solar system and the best place in the freaking universe. Our final morning, we're doing one last search for the mighty crocodile known as Croczilla. Now what makes these crocodiles so elusive is that they're able to come up and get a small breath of air through their nostrils and stick the tiniest part of their body at the surface of the water, get a big breath of air, and actually seal their nostrils up kind of like a snorkel almost, and then dive down, and they could be beneath the surface of the water for over an hour, maybe even up to two with some of the larger individuals. During the heat of the day, it's much cooler down in the depths of the water, so being cold-blooded animals and needing to regulate their body temperature, they'll actually just often sink down there and just enjoy the coolness of the water while the rest of the world has to sweat it out. I bet you he's got his eyes up on the surface of the water right now, saying, what is this ridiculous Canadian in a canoe doing in my pond? Always scanning the horizon for him, when in reality he could be right beneath the boat. But they're not vicious man-eaters. Everyone thinks that as soon as you sit in a crocodile's pond, you know, your lunch that is not the case. I've been out here for days in the thick of the swamp trying to find these apex predators. And all they want to do is hide and be left alone. They're not evil, soulless monsters whose sole intent is to kill. Not at all. Rather, they are the guardians and the gatekeepers of this wonderful ecosystem. Humans are the dangerous animals out here. We're the real killers. I saw more dead snakes on the road than live ones. I saw people intentionally swerving to hit snakes. Even though this is a national park and this is, this is their space. It's not like they're coming into the cities and intentionally killing people, but people are coming out here and intentionally killing them. All right, maybe he's in this other pond. Let's see. In a lot of slide activity on the side of the pond here. It's nothing more than a bunch of reeds that have been flattened down in one direction where something has come up on the side to get out of the water, dry off for a bit, warm up a bit. Could it be him? This ecosystem, especially down the mangrove forest, is such an intricate maze of hiding holes and waterways. So if an animal, especially a croc, wants to slip through here undetected, he definitely can. And that's all the better for him. This is, this is the way Florida was, and this is the way we should keep it in pockets so that the remaining apex predators and all the other wildlife of Florida continues to have their own safe space. You know? It's the ignorance of man to think we can have it all. 
I hope one day we'll wake up and realize that we need all life in order to sustain our life. If we continue to extinguish species after species, eventually we're gonna extinguish our own. So because of the storms, I officially have to ring the bell. No large male croc. But it's almost better that way because it gives me something to come back and explore. A little redemption. And wherever you are, Mr. Crocodile, I hope you have a great day. Stay wild. You know, it's a real shame that in a place as beautiful as this, as remote sort of in a way as this, there's still human rubbish here. And it's clear that this was left behind. Uh, someone was here and someone just didn't have the decency to take it back out. And if that's the type of person you are, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to everyone else who wants to make a difference. Um, these sort of things you can find online, super cheap. Pick them up if you can. Some are collapsible. Oh, come on, collapse. Some are collapsible. These bags are nice because you can dump them out at wherever your earliest convenience and then you can rinse them out, wash them, dry them out, and use them again. They roll up, these fold up, and then when you're out here and someone else who's been a real jerk has left their trash behind, you can do a difference maker and pick up that trash. It's sad, uh, but you know, we can't worry about the people doing it. We just have to be stronger. There are more of us than there are them, and if we all just work together, we're going to make a huge difference, and hopefully we can put the pressure on the folks who are so lazy they can't carry a Sprite can out with them. It's sad, but it is what it is, and uh, it is what it is right now. And all you can focus on is the moment. Every time you think about a past moment gone by that you haven't done something, you're wasting too much time. Don't waste time thinking about the past. Spend your time thinking about the moment, the next step forward, and hopefully you can make a step with us and be a wild hero and protect beautiful places and beautiful animals such as the little big Econ Lakachi River and maybe the American crocodile and everything else that shares this great planet with us. Wow, what an incredible journey. Uh, this summer was definitely the highlight, one of the highlights of the year. The year's not over, but I don't know how it could get any better than that. Diving into the lair and exploring the realm of the mighty crocodilians of Florida was absolutely uh, the coolest thing ever, especially for the Canadian inside of me that ima never even imagined they get to have that sort of opportunity and immerse myself that totally uh, really reinvigorated the fire in my belly, the fire that's not gone out to protect these species. And I'm going to protect these species by finding the wild hero in everyone. And how uh, can we start? Well, we need to stop littering like right now. Crocodilians have been surviving. For millions and millions of years, they've outlasted dinosaurs, ice ages, but they can't outlast pollution. So us wild heroes, we need to be their protection, their survival strategy to survive a little bit longer. On the next part, I'm going to continue our story and we're going to look for the apex predator of Florida's forests. An animal that used to lurk these very woods, but is now at the brink of extinction and maybe we can take what we learned from the crocodile's comeback story and apply it to these wonderful animals. We're going to take that hippo 
and get it out of here. That HIPPO habitat loss, invasive, pollution, poaching, and over-harvesting. We're going to take all those issues and we're going to make them a thing of the past. Tomorrow is a new dawn. And for the next portion of it, we're going to move to a different part of the Everglades and search for another one of Florida's apex predators, the Florida panther.